The Sonoran Desert has always captivated me with its mystery and wonder. Its vast and tough landscapes ignite my imagination, and everywhere you look there are towering saguaro cacti, aromatic sage and sturdy mesquite trees guarding ancient secrets. Since I was a little kid, I've been fascinated by stories of lost treasures, vanished outlaw gangs, and strange events whispered about in the desert's borderlands. After finishing my studies, I eagerly took on a job as a park ranger at Saguaro National Park. I couldn't wait to escape the crowds at the visitor centers and delve deep into the wilderness. Don't get me wrong, teaching families about desert life is fulfilling, but what I truly love is exploring. I thrive on discovering new trails, uncovering ancient petroglyphs that haven't been seen in ages, and monitoring hidden wildlife cameras for glimpses of rare animals. Sure, the job may not come with fancy perks, and some might think it's a lonely way to live, but for me, it's where I belong. During my ten years working at the park, I've seen my fair share of strange happenings. There were people crossing the border, hikers getting lost, and even smugglers sneaking through with their goods. But nothing could prepare me for what I experienced a few weeks ago. It all began while I was hiking along the Peralta Trail, checking for any signs of illegal dumping. Out of the corner of my eye, I glimpsed something unusual. It looked like a tall, hairy creature walking through the desert bushes. I know it might sound unbelievable, but I swear on my life that's what I saw. At first, I thought maybe I was just tired and thirsty, imagining things. But then, strange things started happening around my campsite at night. I heard heavy footsteps crunching through the underbrush and eerie howls echoing in the darkness. I decided to set up a special camera near my tent, equipped with night vision, facing the direction where the strange noises came from. After a few nights, I eagerly checked the footage and couldn't believe my eyes. There it was, a big hairy creature walking on two legs, lurking just outside my campsite. It was only on the screen for a moment, but seeing it confirmed that I wasn't imagining things. Determined to learn more, I started actively searching for signs of the creature. And guess what? I found huge footprints in the sand near watering holes and bits of rough hair stuck in the thorns of desert plants. I even discovered some small bones buried in the dirt that I couldn't recognize. One night, when the moon was hidden, I gathered all my bravery and went back to the area where I had last seen the creature. I hid in the shadows, staying as quiet as possible for hours. Then I heard the heavy footsteps drawing near. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I could just barely make out the silhouette of a massive, strong creature prowling on all fours. Suddenly it stopped and rose up on its hind legs, towering over seven feet tall. That's when I quickly took a photo, but the flash gave me away. With incredible speed and agility, the creature bounded off into the darkness, leaving me stunned. I still have lots of questions swirling in my mind. What exactly is this creature? Where did it come from? And why does it choose to hide in the farthest corners of the desert? I might never find all the answers, but deep down, I just know it's real. At first, I was too afraid to tell anyone about what I saw. I was worried that if the bosses at the park found out, they might think I was crazy and take away my job. But you know what they say about secrets. They have a way of slipping out. Before I knew it, my colleagues caught me whispering to myself while watching the strange footage I had captured. I hesitated, thinking they'd laugh at me, but to my surprise, most of them were curious instead of doubtful. It turns out many of the older folks who've been around the park for a while have their own tales to tell. They talk about hearing strange howls in the distant valleys during the dark nights when the moon is new. Some even mention finding odd arrangements of rocks and feathers hidden deep within the narrow canyons. And then there are hikers who swear they felt eyes on them and suddenly felt like they weren't alone in the vast desert. I got in touch with a zoologist from the University of Arizona who knows a lot about animals living in the Sonoran Desert. When he saw the pictures of the strange creature, he was amazed. It was a tall, reddish-brown creature moving on all fours in the video. He said he couldn't say for sure what it was without more proof, but he agreed to come with me on a trip to find more evidence. Together, we went on lots of trips deep into the desert, looking for any signs of this mysterious creature. 
It didn't take long for us to find clues that something big and possibly dangerous was out there, roaming around on the high rocky hills. We found several trees like scrub oak and mesquite with deep scratches on their trunks about seven feet off the ground. The bark was all torn up, almost like someone was marking their territory. It didn't look like the scratches left by a bear or a mountain lion. Then we found big piles of poop on some cliff sides. They were full of fur, bits of bone, claws, and hooves from other animals. It seemed like some kind of predator was taking its prey back to these caves to eat and stay safe. I collected samples of the poop, but when we tested them in the lab we couldn't figure out what kind of animal it came from. But the scariest thing we found was some hair caught on the thorny bushes. It wasn't like the hair from a coyote or a bobcat. It looked a lot like the hair I saw on the creature in the video. I put some of it in bags to show to experts. Even though we searched really hard, we never actually saw the creature itself. It was like it only came out when it was getting dark or just before the sun came up. It was really good at staying hidden. No matter how hard we tried to stay out from dusk until dawn, our bodies couldn't keep up with the exhaustion. During the day, the creature stayed hidden, making it even harder to spot. But wherever it went in the park, it left marks behind, showing us where it had been. I have to admit, I've become a little bit obsessed with finding out more about this creature. Now, I spend my time reading every book and blog I can find about mysterious creatures in the Southwest. I talk to native historians, anthropologists, and other park rangers to learn about local legends. Some stories go way back to ancient times, while others come from medieval Spanish writings. They talk about all sorts of things, like tricksters who can change their shape, kids raised by wolves, and even stories about werewolves that travel around. From what I've learned, it seems like people have been seeing something out here for hundreds of years. It's not quite like any animal, but it's definitely not human either. Its true nature and where it came from are still a big mystery, but I'm determined to be the one who figures it out. Some people who study mysterious creatures might not take me seriously, but I know what I saw, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to uncover the truth about this creature of the Sonoran Desert. Once upon a time, during the cold days of last winter, I had quite the adventure up in northern Minnesota, near Boundary Waters Canoe Area. It's a stunning place, with lots of trees, lakes, and all sorts of nature stuff. Now, I'm someone who loves being outside. I've been hiking and camping forever, so I know my way around the woods pretty well. I decided to go on a solo camping trip. It was December, and boy was it freezing. But I had all the right gear, or at least I thought I did. The first couple of days went smoothly. I went fishing when the sun was up and took long walks through the woods. It was so peaceful you wouldn't believe it. But then, on the third night, things took a strange turn. I was lying in my tent trying to get some shut-eye when I heard a sound outside, and it was unlike anything I'd ever heard before. It was like a howl, but not like any animal I knew. It sounded... well... It sounded kind of desperate, but I couldn't quite figure out what it was. One night, while camping in the snowy woods, I heard a strange noise outside my tent. It sounded desperate, like someone or something was calling out for help. Being curious, I decided to investigate. I put on my boots, grabbed my flashlight, and unzipped my tent. The moon was bright, casting a silvery glow over the snow-covered ground, and with the moonlight I could see pretty well even without my flashlight. I walked cautiously towards the source of the sound, trying not to make a sound. After a few minutes, I spotted it. It was tall and skinny, standing by a tree. Its skin was a strange gray color, and its eyes glowed in the darkness. I was petrified. What do you do when you see something like that? Do you run? Do you scream? I had no idea. The creature didn't move either, just stood there, staring, and then it made that terrible howling noise again, even louder this time, hurting my ears. I felt like my ears were going to burst. That's when the creature started moving. This creature, they say it's a wendigo or maybe something else, started moving closer to me. Its movements were strange, like something out of those old movies where the characters move in a jerky way. It was scary, but I couldn't stop looking. I stepped back slowly, not wanting to turn away from it. With every step it took, the snow didn't even crunch beneath its feet. It was like it was gliding instead of walking. 
I can't really explain it, but you know what really got to me, the smell. It was awful, like something rotten mixed with wet dirt and it filled my nose and made me feel sick. I never smelled anything like it before, and I hope I never do again. As the creature came closer, I could see its face more clearly under the moonlight and its eyes were deep set and its mouth had long, sharp teeth like needles. It looked like it hadn't eaten in a long time, all thin and hungry looking. I knew I had to do something. I couldn't just stand there and let myself get into trouble. So I started shouting and waving my arms, trying to make myself look bigger. I don't know why I thought that would work, but it was all I could think of at the moment. To my surprise, the creature stopped and it just stood there, tilting its head as if it was confused. I kept yelling, and even threw in some threats for good measure. I don't think it understood what I was saying, but the noise seemed to bother it. Then, all of a sudden it jerked around in this strange way and darted into the trees. The way it moved was so odd, just vanishing into the darkness of the forest. I wasted no time so I hurried back to my tent, grabbed all my gear and started hiking back to my truck. I didn't bother packing neatly or being quiet anymore and all I could think about was getting out of there. As I walked I kept glancing back, half expecting to see that creature following me, but it never appeared again. When I finally reached my truck, I tossed my gear in the back and drove away as fast as I could. I drove straight home. I must have looked a mess when I got back because my roommate immediately asked, what happened to you? I just shrugged it off, saying I cut the trip short because of the bad weather. I didn't think he'd believe me if I told him about the Wendigo. But that night I couldn't sleep. Every little noise in the house made me jump and I kept seeing the creature's face every time I closed my eyes. I was a mess, but the next day I made a decision. I had to find out if what I saw was real or if I was just imagining things. I even posted on some online forums where people discuss these things. Most thought I was joking, but a few took me seriously. One person even claimed to have seen something similar in the same area a few years ago. He's the one who suggested I talk to you. After a couple of days of this, I was more puzzled than ever. Part of me wanted to go back to prove I wasn't imagining things, but the rational part of me said, no way, you're lucky to have gotten away. After that incident, I started avoiding the woods, which was a big change for me. I even began seeing a therapist because I kept having nightmares about the creature. Months passed, and little by little I started feeling better. I even went camping again, but always with friends and never in the same place. Still, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, and every sound in the forest, every shadow, made me worry that the creature was back. And that's pretty much the whole story. The important thing I learned from all of this is that there are things in the world we don't understand. Things that don't fit neatly into our understanding. Now when I go into the woods, I'm more careful and respectful of the fact that I'm not always the biggest thing out there. A few years ago in June, I discovered a wonderful place near Springer Mountain in Georgia. It was the ideal spot for a peaceful jog along the Appalachian Trail. On that day, everything seemed just right. It was that special time of year when spring transitions into summer. The birds were happily chirping, the sun was shining brightly, and a gentle breeze blew through the air. Everywhere I looked, there were vibrant shades of green, making the surroundings warm and inviting. Coming from the city of Memphis and having recently moved to Georgia, I was still getting used to this trail, but I quickly fell in love with it. Unlike the crowded parks of Atlanta, this trail was peaceful and serene. Its challenging terrain always kept me on my toes and my heart pumping. Despite being away from the hustle and bustle of the city, I couldn't completely escape the outside world. However, during those precious moments on that Saturday morning, it felt like it was just me the trail, and nature. I started my usual run around 8 o'clock after enjoying a light breakfast. I love running because it helps me clear my mind and feel calm in this busy world. Plus, it's fun to get lost in something that's not too serious for a little while. I was enjoying the peace of the trail so much that I didn't even realize I had gone deeper than usual. Maybe I was feeling adventurous, or maybe I just got carried away by the rhythm of my run. I found myself deep in the lush mountainside, about five miles from where I started. 
When I finally noticed how far I'd gone and decided to turn back, everything seemed different, and it felt strange and unfamiliar. I tried not to worry too much, and maybe I had just wandered into a new part of the trail. It's funny how your mind can play tricks on you when you're alone in a new place. Even though I felt a little uneasy, I pushed myself to run faster, trusting my instincts. As I turned the corner, I was hit by a terrible smell. It was so strong and really gross. It smelled like rotten fruit in a hot, damp place, and it made me feel sick, so I stopped walking right away, feeling like I might throw up. And then I heard something, a noise that seemed wild and fierce, echoing all around. The sound was strange, like a mix between a growl and a bark. It sounded rough and scary, making me feel scared too. I knew no bird or squirrel could make a noise like that, and while standing there in the bright morning light I felt a sudden fear, which was strange because the place looked so beautiful. But there I was, feeling really scared. I thought the woods would go quiet after the noise stopped. Instead, there was this weird feeling in the air, like something wasn't right. It felt like the calm before a big storm, so I tried to focus on finding my way back home, pushing away thoughts of the scary noise I heard. I hoped whatever animal made that noise would stay far away from me. Then out of nowhere a huge figure appeared from the shadows, and it surprised me as much as if a tree had suddenly fallen. Despite its enormous size, it moved gracefully, almost like a dancer, weaving through the trees. It seemed like something you'd only hear about in stories told around a campfire, not something real. There it was, standing tall in the quiet woods. This creature was huge, maybe eight or nine feet tall, with a chest as wide as a barrel. It looked strong and powerful, with long muscular arms that swayed gently as it looked around with deep-set eyes. Its face was rough and scarred, with a big jaw and wide nostrils. Its hair looked messy, thin in some spots and thicker in others. It was a light brown color, with dark patches that maybe helped it hide. Even from far away, there was a terrible smell coming from it like rotten meat mixed with something burning, and it made my nose scrunch up. I heard a soft noise coming from its throat, like a growl trying to stay quiet under the forest's silence. Its eyes stared right into mine. I wish I could say I was brave, but I was really scared. I couldn't move, like fear had glued me to the ground while those big eyes kept watching me, and it felt like a long time, but then it just sighed seeming disappointed, and walked back into the trees. It moved so calmly, like a giant mountain shifting, and that's when I ran as fast as I could down the trail, my heart racing. As I ran, all I could hear was my heart thumping in my ears. I stumbled through the rest of my run, hurrying back to the safety of my car. Once I was inside, safe and sound, I just sat there trying to process what I had seen, it felt like something you'd only see in a movie or on a nature show. For the next few days, I felt like I was in a dream, questioning what I saw and trying to explain it away as something normal, like a bear or a person dressed up. But deep down, I knew what I saw was real. The images were clear in my mind beyond anything I could imagine. I had come face to face with a Sasquatch, a creature many people think is just a story. I felt a mix of emotions. Part of me felt relieved to have seen something so rare and exciting, but another part felt nervous about what others might say. Even if people didn't believe me, I knew in my heart that something incredible had happened, like a special gift from the forest. I've always loved listening to stories about things that can't quite be explained, like ghosts and mysteries. My spouse, on the other hand, prefers to listen to podcasts about crimes and murders, so our house is a bit of a mix of spooky and dark tales. Sometimes I think it's good for us humans to be reminded that we don't have all the answers and that there are still mysteries out there waiting to be solved. But here's something strange. Despite my love for supernatural stories, I completely forgot about some weird things that happened to me when I was a kid. It's funny how our brains work like that, isn't it? I hadn't thought about any of these strange encounters until I talked with my brother recently. When I was little, maybe around seven or nine years old, I woke up one night to someone shaking my shoulder. It was a girl about my age with black hair, wearing this really odd nightgown with lace and puffy parts. She told me to wake up and then giggled as she ran out of my room. 
I thought it was my older sister playing a prank, so I grumpily followed her, only to find nobody in the hallway. Downstairs, I found my mom and sister making pancakes, and when I asked about my sister waking me up, they both looked at me like I was speaking a different language. My sister was not wearing a nightgown. It was all very confusing, and my mom just said it was probably a dream. A few months later, I saw the same girl again. This time, it was when we were getting ready for a family cookout at my uncle's house. My mom forgot her purse, so she sent me to get it. As I went upstairs, I heard humming coming from my parents' room. When I peeked in, I saw the girl from before, playing with a wooden ball. I was frozen with fear, afraid she'd see me, but then she turned and giggled. It wasn't a scary giggle, but it still made my heart race. I ran back to the car and told my mom I couldn't find her purse. She went to get it herself, and when she found it exactly where she said it was, she wasn't too pleased with me. I hadn't thought about those strange encounters for years until my brother reminded me of something. He used to be scared to go upstairs alone because he'd hear giggling and the sound of little feet running around. He even said his toys would be moved around when he left them out. Learning this made me feel a mix of emotions. On one hand, I was upset to be reminded of those creepy moments, but on the other hand, I felt relieved. It meant I wasn't the only one who experienced something weird. So after talking with my brother and comparing our experiences, I've decided to share this story with you. Maybe we're both a little crazy, or maybe there really are things out there that we can't explain. I don't know why there would be a spirit in my parents' house, especially since they built it themselves and nobody else has ever lived there. Maybe she's connected to the land somehow. To be honest, I'm not sure I want to know more. Some mysteries are best left unsolved. Since I can remember, I have been working really hard for something. Back in high school, my goal was to get into a good university, so I focused a lot on getting good grades and joining extracurricular activities. Then after high school, I was all about getting my degree so I could land a good job. I put so much effort into my career, and I'm proud to say it paid off. Now I have a really cool job in my field, and I've accomplished a lot. But, you know, something was missing. I couldn't remember the last time I took a real break. It felt like I had been working non-stop for the past 20 years, so I decided it was time to change that. I wanted to do something completely different, something just for me. That's when I came up with the idea of going on a solo road trip around the southwestern United States. I packed my bags, used up all my vacation time, and hit the road. It felt so freeing to just drive wherever I wanted. I visited big cities, saw famous landmarks, and enjoyed the beautiful nature along the way. I had planned out where I would stay each night, whether it was at hotels, Airbnbs, or with friendly families who welcomed travelers like me into their homes. The trip was amazing, but there was one strange thing I noticed, especially in the rural desert areas. People there seemed different. In the cities and towns, everyone was friendly and polite, but out in the desert, folks seemed distant, like they wanted to be left alone. It made me wonder if they were hiding something, but I didn't let that spoil my trip. After all, I wasn't there to make friends, and as long as I had a place to sleep, I was happy. About halfway through my journey, I stayed at an Airbnb in the desert. It was a cute little house, and I was excited to have some quiet time all to myself. That night, I watched the sunset and marveled at the stars. Without the city lights, the sky looked incredible. I made myself some hot chocolate, wrapped up in a cozy blanket, and watched a movie before falling asleep. But then, in the middle of the night, I woke up suddenly and couldn't fall back asleep, no matter what I tried. It felt like something was off, like the air was charged with tension. I decided to go outside for some fresh air. The stars were shining brighter than ever, and I even saw a shooting star. But then I saw more and more shooting stars, and they started looping around in the sky. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. I couldn't believe my luck, but then things got even weirder. The shooting stars formed a giant glowing circle in the sky, and it turned bright blue, lighting up the whole desert. It was like something out of a movie. I couldn't look away, and then there was a loud cracking noise like thunder, and everything went dark. The next morning I woke up late, feeling confused. 
My alarm had gone off, but I didn't remember snoozing it, and I didn't remember getting into bed the night before. It was all so strange, but I couldn't stop thinking about the incredible sight I had witnessed in the desert that night.